going to go over chat the part two again, just some highlights. And um, I put some new photos in here. I hope this works. Okay. And I wanted to recap on the construction and mechanical makeup where we were talking about construction and that involves heat. So lamp work and blown glass and fused glass are shown here. And we did see this last time. So I added another coronet so that you could see a little bit better how this little red glass is fused on the top of this button. Here's an impression inlay. So last, last week, I only had this one on the lower right. And now I've got a rooster and a fox to show you how these are pressed into the glass when they're hot. So these are our impression inlays. Now, last time we didn't have any pictures of any paperweights. So I thought these might be good to show um, this, this week. And I took some side views and you can see this paperweight on the left is a division one paperweight and it is a swirl back. And it even has little flecks of foil in it. And it is a black glass paperweight. The ones on the right are considered division three. Even though this has a type of a swirl, it's really more modern than this one over here on the left, the division one. I, I think Annie might agree with me that this would be a division three button paperweight. And then the one on the top is definitely, it's a Mary Gaumond button. And in the book, you can see the process of Mary Gaumond's her process from the cane to the button to the end where she's got a finished button. So I highly recommend looking at that. Simone, and just just one one recap, the difference between division one and division three. Well, uh, division one is going to be 1918 or earlier, and I believe 1918 or 1919. And then division three is going to be post-1918. So modern, yeah. modern glass. And you can sort of see the, the glass has a, um, a more finer quality to it, smoother. These older glass paperweights tend to, um, somebody told me it was called like a glass disease and they tend to get, um, corrosion on them and uh, they tend to start to um, deteriorate, believe it or not. And they're very, very fragile. Let's see if I can get the next slide here. Um, and then we didn't have any pictures of moon glow. So I thought I'd show you a black glass moon glow. And this is a side view, a back view and a front view. And even though this looks sort of purple, um, I, I think if I you saw the first part of my presentation, um, black glass does when it has that um, light, backlight, it will look purple or violet sometimes. And then here's a variety of overlays. Uh, before we only had the ribbon and the sheet overlay. And then I'm showing you three more up here on top. And um, these are all division one overlays. Here's some more types of overlays. Um, the one on the left here is considered a salt. It's a fine glass grit. This is division one, whoops, sorry. Um, the button on the right is encrusted and it's a little thicker, um, uh, larger glass shards or pieces of 
glass. And this, I believe, is a Division One or Division Three button, modern, the encrusted. And then here's coralline, and these are like little rounded beads. So overlays, to tell you again, overlays are created with heat. It's a construction technique. And here's some cased glass. And um, these are black glass, cased glass. Now, I know this one on the bottom doesn't look like it's um, black glass, but it is. At least that's what I was told. <laughs> So it's an overlay on this one on the top left would be a black glass button with an overlay of orange and the swan is an overlay of this red color. Okay, so we talked about tiles and, I'm, and then we talked about this rare uh, painted design under glass. And then this one, a close-up detail. And I'm gonna try to jump. We talked about intermixed last week. And I'm gonna try to jump to, let's see if I can get to it. I'm gonna go a little fast here, so bear with me because most of you saw this last week. So if you have any questions, you can we can talk about it again at the end. Okay, mechanical makeup. I had some new slides in here. And we talked about frames and glass with glass. And we did not talk about the mosaic. This is glass with glass and this is a mosaic. And then this is a two piece. So this is glass with glass, but it's a two piece glass. And the, the, the base is black and the top is clear glass. Most of these have a white glass base. This one happens to be black. Um, metal backs, last week you only saw the flies or the little bugs, whatever they are. Um, this bird or this bird's head um, is a wafer thin piece of glass. It's division one. And this is the metal back. And you do not see the metal from the front of, but front of the button. So it is a black glass button. It is not glass set in metal. It's a metal back. And this is a bimini, which is division three, generally. And this also is a metal back. And then we talked about precision inlays and I got you a couple more examples to show the difference between the division one and the division three. Um, I know that there is some talk that this may not be division one, it could be transitional, but most of the old timers have told me it's division one, the little one with the, um, the circle of precision inlay glass in it. And then this one on the right is obviously division three and I didn't show you a back image, but the, the back looks like your typical West German glass button. Perfectly formed, no cracks, a very smooth self shank. Okay, so now we go through, and we talked about escutcheons, and we talked about rimmed. And I'm going to try to get to the, okay, that's the end of that first part. Were there any questions before I start part three? Or should we save them for the end? Okay. So molded surface designs are in chapter five of the Black Glass Handbook, and they vary from shallow and finely textured to deeply dimensional designs molded into molten, uh, molten glass.
New collectors are often unsure how to tell the difference among impressed, recessed, embossed, and intaglio. So we've shown several examples of these as well as other types of molded surface designs in the book. But here I'm going to show you a good example of impressed, which is the first one. Recessed, embossed, and then intaglio. And the recessed, the impressed, let's see, let me get you. The intaglio has a design that's deeply cut into the surface of the glass. And these are really hard to learn. You're gonna say, well, why isn't this an intag intaglio, the one on the bottom? This design, the entire design will, is like a reverse cameo. This one on the bottom has an edge and the design is completely sunk in and it's a complete design and there's this outer edge that has a flat surface. The one on the top left is like a cameo design. Other material embellishment is really probably my favorite, one of my favorite things besides back marks and back types. Um, and it's, it's really neat to try to find as many different kinds as you can. Um, this one shows uh, silver impressed into the black glass button and of course rhinestones on the right. Here's uh, clear and colored glass with black glass. And I think um, some of you might remember the article. There's been a series of three articles in the National Button Bulletin. Oh, the third article is coming out in December. And um, Diane Schmelding is here with us today. And this is what you might call, um, was formerly known as a veil button, but we don't know if they really were used for veils. This is enamel set into black glass and fabric on the right. Here is some glitter. And sometimes uh, instead of glitter, you'll see Galena. And Galena won't have the, diff the multicolor effect like this, but it'll be look like a grit, almost like a salty gray grit and pearl chips embedded or pearl inlay. Uh, this is pretty cool, this wood button with a piece of wood veneer in the center of it. And then the button on the right um, is believed to be a fired on ceramic. Um, some people have said it's enamel paint, but after talking to the people that purchase these buttons from Czechoslovakia, um, they are division three buttons um, that this is applied by hand. It's, it's like a liquid porcelain. Let's see if I can get that. The button on the left has a gutter percha on me. And then the button on the right is most likely compressed paper. Um, we're not really sure. It could be uh, a composition, but it looks more porous than composition, um, and we're thinking compressed paper. There's combinations of OMEs. A steel watch wheel and a steel uh, center with pearl in the background, and then white metal with rhinestones on a black glass disc. And I, we talked about this last week that um, foil embedded is not an OME. It is in the, and this is a paperweight with foil. Um, and it has a green glass cap and it's black on the base. But 
this foil is not considered OME. Then finally, let's see, we have a chapter on pictorials and I was not going to show you every single black glass pictorial. There are probably thousands of different pictorials, but these are a, uh, four of the fun ones uh, that we found. And we've got plant life, animal life, um, objects, and some little figures. And I love this little snail. Um, and even though this button has chips on the outside edge, this little snail is quite um, a scarce little black glass button, not to mention the, the knife, fork, and spoon. Hard to find. Uh, patterns. So if you're going to do a tray of black glass, you might, might want to make sure that one of your buttons has a pattern on it. And um, I don't know, every state is different. Every state show, people judge differently. But I, I think that it wouldn't be unusual to get a point for a pattern on a black glass tray. And this black glass on the right has a matte finish and then a shiny surface. So it'd be a two, two types of finishes on this button surface here. Here's combination of patterns. So you have two patterns on each button. There's, you can use symbols. And then of course there's the turners. And um, one of the most interesting stories is about these turners. And we're showing three examples here. Um, the buttons were worn by German gymnastics clubs or gym, gymnast clubs founded in 1811 to build a youth cult through athletics and gymnastics. And the club was the precursor to the Nazi organization. The American club was founded in 1848. The 4F symbol represents their motto, which is Frisch, Fromm, Froelich, Fry, hardy, pious, cheerful, free. So uh, unfortunately, a really good organization um, took a turn for the worse, I, no pun intended, <laughs> for Turner's. And then of course you wanna include shapes on any good card, you wanna have shapes. So we are gonna have many examples in the book. Here are three, your contour, your linear, and your realistic. And that is the end of the third part. And I imagine there could be some questions. <laughs> wow, thank you very much. At one point, Jane Albanelski had her hand raised. Yes, I, I saw that, but I... And in the chat, Lynn Tannebaker asked, are turners a usage button? I think they are. Annie? Is Annie still here? Oh, yeah. I, I'm going to defer to Annie because I think... A, well, I, I mean, you... You're certainly going to get a point for rarity, and yeah. um, I believe it I think is. You a could. I mean, it's not. It's not a uniform button, so it is like a society. So societies are usage. I would say yes. Thanks. Uh, um, I, and one other thing. Um, if you go back to the picture of the embossed and the cameo intaglio and oh I mean, yeah yeah okay. I think I might have had those mixed up. No, no. I I just I'm just looking at the classification and the intaglio or it says cameo and embossed with a slash in the classification. So either one of those would be a point on a on a summary. You don't both of them you wouldn't get two points. Right. Because it's a slash. Correct. You know what I mean? Right. 
So they're used kind of interchangeably in the classification. Okay. Jane has a question. <clears throat> I don't know. Um, can you see this? Yeah, that's now, a white glass button. Yes, this is white glass with a black glass head. This was a, a, a Pan Luke did a, a feature right. article in this month's uh, New Jer National State Bulletin. Mm -hmm. And um, she identified this, which I'd long collected. This is one of my better examples. It not it comes in black glass too with gold. And I've never seen that. And, yeah, and she comes, had it, it comes in gold and silver and black And she glass. identified it as an opera singer, which right. which which I never knew. I only I just had I had it listed as an Ethiopian lady and never found it. And that's what it's listed as, Jane, in the I think it's in the big book. It might say that or some of the other books. And I believe Maxine um Casey Richards Richmond also did an article for um the Buckeye Bulletin. So there's another article about her. Well, now the question, the question I have when you're talking about this, you're going to say this is black on white glass, but now is this impressed? How, I mean, this isn't a, an escutcheon. That's glass on glass. So, so the reality is it's, it's, it's probably glued on. Would you agree? I mean, how? I'm thinking it is. Yeah. I don't think it's an escutcheon, no. I, it's not an escutcheon, and you wouldn't call it impressed. It's been a while since I've done these. Um, it's not impressed, but yet um, it certainly is black glass stuck. <laughs> it's like a cameo black glass. That's a cameo mm -hmm. cut or mold. It's cameo. But literally. But it's, but it's molded. <laughs> And, and paste it on, wouldn't you say? It's glued, yeah. It's a not, glue. I don't believe it's fused. Anybody that knows better, please correct me. Um, I don't believe that that is fused. I've seen one with red eyes too, and uh, with red glass eyes, paste eyes, and I don't know how original that is. I've only seen the, the clear glass paste. And then recently somebody sent Pam and I a copy of red paste. Well, those pastes fall out real easily. I can tell you that. Yeah. And so somebody could have just put red eyes in, but I've never seen another one with red eyes. Have you, Annie? Mm -hmm. So we kind of thought maybe it was a makeup. Yeah. Did it help that I went over and showed you pictures of paperweights and moon glows and different overlays? Mm -hmm. Did that so help would, a little bit? Would this come under mechanical know. makeup then? I mean, how would it's, you list it's it? Glass with glass. So yes. It's glass with glass. All right. Yes. Yeah. It's not construction. Okay. Was that too was it all too much information? No. <laughs> Um, I, I am going to look forward to seeing it again, though, and, and we, we will at some point get it up and available to people. I'm, um, is my mic on? I can't even tell. Yeah. Okay, so I'm to the point now where I'm still not quite sure that I've got black glass in some places. Co-host has asked you to start your video. Did I'm I sorry. I did. I asked you to start your video. Me? Yeah, we don't see you. Oh, oh, my video. Okay. <laughs> my video. Okay. Start video. Thank you. Okay. So um, I'm, I'm going to share a screen with something that's very, you just talked about something that was black and white. And um, this was in, come on, share screen. Where are you? Um, this was in a bunch of Ann Wilson's buttons unsorted. Here we go. And I don't think that it's really black glass, but it's that black on white. It's a cameo, right? And yet there is the back of it. That two of them look metal, two are metal. These two are metal and is that it was tied together. 
And and that one uh, is black glass. Sorry. I think one is black glass. Yeah. I think that really is black glass. I don't know though. I can't. Uh. It it you know it. But I'm I'm honestly I'm afraid to say I'm having a hard time telling between black glass and china with clinking. Oh. The, I'd have I would for first of all I would take them apart. Don't right. keep them tied with a wire. That's not a good idea. Mm -hmm. Wire is bad. Bare wire is bad. Bad, bad, bad. <laughs> right. And um, I think two of those buttons are metal. And I don't know about the cat. Is that a cat? Um, the, it, it's, yeah, it's a like a tiger thing. The shank almost looked like glass, but I could not tell. Could you tell, Annie? I couldn't tell. Um, it, it looks like black glass to me. I mean, it, 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 did it looks to like me, the classic. Hmm? Yeah, the shank. The fact that it was tied to um, tied to metal. That while... doesn't mean anything. I, I think it was just, I mean, I have stuff that's mixed up together all the time. I'm right. sure every collection does. Okay. I don't think that means anything. Mm -mm. So, so I'm going to beg your, um, beg your, 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 uh, your, uh, expertise here's another one that's on Anne's tray of overlays and it looks like that in the front can you see it mm -hmm. and it looks like no no it looks like come on I have another picture of it where'd it go oh dear I don't have it but anyway the back looks like just um a self shank or a or a wire loop. The 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 back doesn't look like black glass at all. Huh. And here and here it is on the tray of overlay. I I, I did get a picture of it, but apparently I didn't put it up. Um, there is. Those do look like overlays. Right. Except for that one, I don't know. It looks like um. But here is the here is the actual back of this button, and there's no black glass to be seen. Hold on, hold on. Let me see. Oh, that's weird. You sure it's not black glass? No, I'm not. I, it looks like it looks like some even veg. I would have a brown paint on it, a brown wood finish. I suppose it could. I suppose it could. There are some black glass that have that brown paint and I don't know what you know we've been hearing about black glass buttons being painted black to make them more matte I mean maybe they are all the are all the other buttons on that tray black glass I mean I know they're all overlay but are they all black glass I didn't notice it's labeled black glass overlay small oh. okay. black glass overlay small I can show you the picture of it it's kind of fun it could be a mistake. Um, I mean, it could, yeah, could be a mistake. It could be a mistake. Without without seeing a, a close up of front and back, it'd be really hard. Well, I'll send it to you later. But here we go. Here's the here's the um, here's the tray for you to salivate over. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Let's drool, drool, drool. Oh. You know what would be fun? Can it, can anybody pick out an, an overlay that that you talked about? Yeah. Is this tile? That's a sheet. That's a sheet. Oh, I'd like that sheet. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take the sheet. <laughs> yeah, that's a nice button. Yeah, that is a nice. That's in the book. So somebody who's new, who's not an expert, what's this? She showed it first before before we got. I had a green one. Uh huh. It 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 it's named like a a, a royal headpiece. She she's quizzing you guys. Coronet. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. But that's not a coronet, is it? Mm. No. No. The little the white one, the one white, might be the white one. The, in the white center. one. Yeah. In the in middle the might be. And then the star. Where's the star? On the right. All right, with the speckled bottom. Oh. That's is a that, coronet? I think it's a coronet. Well, it's a I star. Thought, I thought it had to be little pieces of stuff. Why wouldn't No, that be it's one stuff? piece, but it's placed on top. It's one little molded piece that's fused to the top. Why isn't it an escutcheon? 
it's it's glass that glass. button's excuse me that button's on page 23 in the black glass book whoa <laughs> look the at one her. with the star look at her whoa you go girl <laughs> <laughs> it's not an escutcheon because escutcheons are metal right okay i i thought most escutcheons are metal yeah that's there's the a little black one with yeah. there's a little tiny bit of foil in the back of that see that Where? little clear glass on the top there's this a little one? bit of no the one in the center there's this a one? little teeny piece of foil behind that clear glass this one or this yep, one? the center one this one okay i thought that was a paste no i believe that's clear glass a dot a dollop of clear glass with foil behind it don't you think annie I think so, yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. And look at that one on the left has pearl inlaid in it. So there's an OME of pearl. Yep. There's all sorts of little button collector terms that people call them berry tops or, you know. Uh, um, I think the, the button on the left that was blue and oh, gold stone. Uh -huh. um, it probably has a metal back. And sometimes they're referred to as gentlemen's buttons. This, this one, on one? Left, this yes. one here? It probably has a metal back. Well, it, further, it was further up on the tray. These trays were these. these are, uh, Ann Wilson's button. Uh, wait a minute. This one, right? I think no. it might have that one, I think, has probably a metal back. And I think probably the one with the pearl also. I'm going to look. And then the one. Up, uh, the one on the far right too probably has a metal plate. No, because of the metal shank. Oh, shit. oh be careful. <laughs> um, I don't think it has a metal back. Okay, I could be wrong. All right, so I'm going to stop sharing and let somebody else have a question. Jane had her hand raised. Well, I. I when they, they say metal on the back, Barbara, they mean metal clasps holding the front to the no, back. No, no. Well, no. that's what an escutcheon is, isn't it? Oh, an es that's She was referring to an, es an es escutcheon. An escutcheon is attached by, by a, so if you turn it around, you see the metal prongs holding it on. That's an escutcheon. Mm -hmm. Okay. But this this particular one does not have a metal back. That's the one you were thinking of. It's it's just a plain ordinary black glass back. Okay, okay, that's a, okay. And it, and it it looks the one with the pearl though. I think. How about the it one looks with the modern pearl? to me? You know. Oh, it's not modern. It's not. It, it's it's the back is all smooth and shiny. It's division one. Okay. Okay. Training. Who else? Well, while I'm taking this to see if checking this to see if it has the metal back without breaking it, who else has a question? Um, you know, last time when we asked you to slow, just spin through your. Do you want me to do that again? Um, raise your hand if you think that's a good idea because it, it helped me a lot. I um, could go from the very beginning. Or no, just this last part. Do you want to go from the very raise Raise your hand if you want her to go from the very, very beginning. It's 441. We have 20 minutes. I'll just, I could just do the last part again. Well, um, I, I, I'm trying, I'm trying to. Um, Can you see that? Yes. Okay. Diane, did you have a comment on this button by any chance? <laughs> Who 
Simone. Let, yeah. let's, let, let's do start at the beginning. I think that would be lovely. We've got time to do it. Okay. Sorry. Okay, well, I'm not going to do the history again. I am going to show you this, though. Do you remember this picture? And this is um, how black glass looks when it's backlit. And then here are some of the things that we talked about again today. Here's that combined um, surface where you have a shiny and a matte. This is matte and shiny. So these are some of the things that you want to look for to include um, when you're doing a tray. The difference between division one and division three. And then remember, you don't just look at the back, you also look at the front and you look at the design. Okay, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go fast through the, I'll pass the history here. These were some black glass buttons found in Bavaria. And then the same buttons were found in a colonial site in Maryland and Virginia. This one's from a Jamestown colony ex excavation on the right. And then the ones from the Bavarian glassworks on the left. These are really old black glass buttons, some of the earliest. Okay, and here we've got back types. Everybody mute, please. The hump and claw shanks. And when you're doing a, a competition um, for the, if it's based on the classification of black glass, you want to include the ones that are listed in the classification. These are um, open work metal and then a solid metal plate. This is one of those metal backs that I was talking about. That's like, um, they call them gentlemen's buttons. And here's how the rivets are applied. This is costume trimming and not a button. More metal shanks. The button on the right is mounted in metal and it's not a black glass button. The one on the top is a very rare example of a black glass thread back. And then some of the different types of back marks and mold marks. Patents, copyrights, and registry marks. This is another one of those metal backs that I, um, I thought that that button that you pulled off, uh, Barb might've had one of these. More maker's themes. Okay. And then we did this again today, the construction and the mechanical makeup. And remember this is done with heat. Paperweights, division one and division three. 
a moon glow. So in a moon glow, a cane is layered and it's lengthwise with black and a translucent and clear colored glass on the sides. And then it's made into this kind of a button. Overlays. And these are just a few of the examples. Cased glass. Tiles. And remember, tiles are not really, they're not precision inlays. Tiles are a type of construction because the glass is little, um, I believe powdered glass is poured into the recesses of this molded glass button. And then it's all fired together, re, uh, probably refired somehow. And then the little white one also has, it looks like some paint on top. So this is made with heat and not glue. Again, the painted design under glass. The intermixed. The, inter the button on the left is an intermixed, but it also has an overlay on top of gold stone and white glass. Decorative finishes, acid etched, lusters, and there's a lot more lusters in these. There's all sorts of different types of lusters and tints. Paint. A question back on the lusters. What the how? What's the process for that? Well, I believe that the glasses are the glass is molded, and then this luster is applied, and it's possible that they're refired. Do you know, Annie? I'm not sure if she knows. Do you know? I I I don't know. But is but, but I mean when you look at the check. The check buttons, they, the new modern ones that have luster on top, they send them to another factory that applies that paint. So obviously, or applies the lusters, and obviously, I think they have to refire them because they don't come off. You know? No, it doesn't come off. The tints come off. So yeah. the lusters do not. So, so it must be heated again. I'm thinking they are. So that's paint. The colors are paint. It's a luster. It's a lustered finish, uh, probably with some metals in the paint. So it could be like a gold leafy kind of thing. That's what it looks like. It's me. not gold. Well, no, uh, there. Oh, I didn't even want to. Looks get like a what? It looks like it's gold leafed over it. No, no, they don't no, do that. Uh, uh. Okay. Um, and I didn't show a picture. Um, I think we have one in the book. I can't remember if we did it or not. There is an electroplated um, black glass, but. Uh, this is in it though. This is not electroplated. Okay. You have to remember, uh, Helene, that they were mass produced, so they wouldn't be using gold leaf in it. You know, a production of million, you know, hundred thousand buttons. Gold leaf wouldn't be anything they would use. I don't no. think. Just by looking at it, that's what it looked like to me. But okay. No. Then the one on the left is paint, and the one on the right is an enameled paint, which means that it's been refired. It's a little bit, probably a better quality paint. And they stay on. The one on the left, the paint may came up, come off. The one on the right is going to stay. And you'll find some of these buttons, and what are they? They're over 100 years old, and they still look like this. Here's, here's a type of electroplating where the flux is painted on the button. The button, um, the flux is a substance um, that will make the gold adhere, the gold or the silver will adhere to the flux in the pattern that's painted. 
So it's dipped and, and it's electroplated. It's an electro, electroplating process. And then when the button comes out, the gold, the, the metal has stuck to the flux. Um, these plastic, the cold plastic enamel um, on black glass comes in a lot of different colors, green, blue, red, brown. Okay, and we, re we went over uh, mechanical makeup. Now remember, this is a, it, the pieces are applied mechanically. So the, the parts are put together and it's not with heat. It would be more of a glue process. The precision inlays. And I think I told you um, that some of these buttons are found, a lot of these buttons are found without the thread and without the metal um, wrapping. Here's an escutcheon where the metal piece is applied through a disc of glass. And generally the shank is part of the escutcheon. Then we talked about rimmed. This is a black glass button with a metal rim. And this is a glass, a black glass button mounted. Um, it's in metal. The glass is mounted in metal. So it would not be used. You don't want to use this on a black glass co classification competition tray. OK, that's the end of the second section. And I think we went through this already. So I'll just flash the pictures real quick. I'd sure love to have that fabric one. <laughs> and remember that the foil is embedded and it's not an OME. And here's the four pictorial, uh, four main classes of pictorial subjects. And we have patterns and combinations. Oh, of I put it in chat. I don't know if you saw it, but normally if you have patterns, you should um, label them to get the point for pattern because everybody's going to have a pattern. So you have to make an effort to show that you know it's a pattern. That's right. You're right, Annie. That's right. And um, Button Country has a really excellent um, classification with with images uh, of patterns to help you. Okay. There we go. What a triumph. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> I didn't show you the end. <laughs> oodles and oodles of credits. So uh, we, Joan and I had many, 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 many people to thank for this presentation. Right. Lynn has her hand up. Jane. Or Jane. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, yeah, you showed the, what you called a veil button with two colors, I, wouldn't that be, could you not say that's glass I was going to let glass? Diane talk about veil buttons. <laughs> but isn't that glass on glass? It's glass, glass on glass. Glass set in metal. Pardon? Glass set in or on metal, yes. Well, no, that was a... No, it's not. No, no, those that was black glass with glass. Um, the oh, little, it was glass on glass. Yeah, that, that was, was a different type of veil button, I'm sorry. Yes. Um, 
yeah, I would say that is glass on glass. Would but, anybody else but agree? Are we really calling them veil buttons still? No, we're not. We're no longer calling them that, but we're standing by for the classification committee to uh, decide. And Peg Bosdet, uh, Peggy Ann Osborne has made a suggestion. And so we're standing by for that. Wait I call them the, the not veil buttons. <laughs> the not veil the buttons. <laughs> And by the way, I would like to introduce someone who's in our meeting here today who was very helpful to me in doing my research about veil buttons, and that is Jade Papa. You'll see her right there. And I just pulled up an introduction about her, so you'll know a little bit more about her. So I'm going to read this quick description. Uh, Jade Papa. Um, is a costume and textile historian. Currently, she curates the textile and costume collection housed at the Design Center on Thomas Jefferson University's East Fall campus. She brings to her work not only extensive experience in object preservation, identification, and research, but an intense curiosity about how these objects shaped and were shaped by the people and cultures who wore the garments and created the textiles. This interest sprung from her experiences as a theatrical costume designer and maker. She has contributed to a number of books, journals, and magazines, and is an experienced lecturer. Yay! <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Diane, that's very kind. Uh, I enjoyed... Uh, playing a little part in that little detective story journey that you went on. So I'm really looking forward to reading your articles. Uh, part yes. three is coming. It's at the printers. Awesome. Yeah, well, she she's coming to get a complimentary copies of all three okay. of the NBS. That's very um, exciting. Thank you. <laughs> well, we, we, uh, we, we are proud to claim Jade as a um, as a New Jersey member.